Friday, June 4th. It's one of the shortest scriptures in the Bible, and it's one of the most important ones. And it reads, pray constantly. And it comes from 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, which reads the same, pray constantly. Jesus said, often throughout the last day of his life on earth, when he instituted the commemoration of his death, he prayed over the bread and the wine. That comes from 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 25 and it reads, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night on which he was going to be betrayed, took a loaf, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This means my body, which is in your behalf. Keep doing this in remembrance of me. He did the same with the cup also after they had the evening meal, saying, This cup means the new covenant by virtue of my blood. Keep doing this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Before leaving the place where they had held the Passover, he prayed with the disciples. John 17, 1 through 26. This is a long one, so be patient with me. The God, the Lord will give me strength, so please be patient. As I read, when he and the disciples arrived at the Mount of Olives that night, he prayed repeatedly. So we're going to read John 17, 1 through 26. Jesus took these things. Jesus spoke these things, rising his head to heaven. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. Just as you have given him authority over all flesh, so that he may give everlasting life to all those who you have given to him. This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I have glorified you on the earth, having finished the work you have given me to do. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory that I had alongside you before the world was. I have made your name manifest to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have observed your word. Now they have come to know that all the things you gave me are from you, because I have given them the saying that you gave me, and they have accepted them and have certainly come to know that I am as your representative, and they have believed that you sent me. I make requests concerning them. I make requests not concerning the world, but concerning those who you have given me, because they are yours. And all my things are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified among them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, watch over them on account of your own name, which you have given me, so that they 
may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I used to watch over them on account of your own name, which you have given me, and I have protected them, and not one of them is destroyed except the son of destruction, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I am saying these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given your word to them, but the word has hated them. The world has hated them because they are no part of the world, just as I am no part of the world. I do not request that you take them out of the world, but that you watch over them because of the wicked one. They are no part of the world, just as I am no part of the world. Sanctify them by means of the truth. Your word is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. And I am sanctifying myself in their behalf, so that they also may be sanctified by means of truth. I make request not concerning these only, but also concerning those putting faith in me through their word, so that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in union with me, and I am in union with you, that they also may be in union with us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you have given me in order that they may be one just as we are one. I in union with them and you in union with me in order that they may be perfected into one so that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them just as you loved me. Father, I want those who you have given me to be with me where I am, in order that they may look upon my glory that you gave, that you have given me, because you loved me before the founding of the world. Righteous Father, the world has indeed not come to know you, but I know you, and these have come to know you, that you sent me. I have made your name known to them and will make it known, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in union with them. When he said, when he and the disciples arrived at the Mount of Olives, that night he prayed repeatedly. Matthew twenty six thirty six through 39. And it reads, Then Jesus came with them to the spot called Gethsemane, and he said to the Disciples, sit down here while I go over there and pray. And taking along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to feel grieved and to be greatly troubled. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Stay here and keep on the watch with me. And going a little way forward, 
we fall face down praying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Matthew 26 and 42, and it reads, Again, a second time, he went off and prayed, My Father, if it is not possible for this to pass away until I drink it, let your will take place. And Matthew 26, 44, and it reads, So leaving them, he again went off and prayed for a third time, saying, once more, the same thing. And the very last words Jesus spoke before dying were uttered in prayer. Luke twenty three forty six, And it reads, As Jesus called out with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. After he said this, he expired. Through prayer, Jesus included Jehovah in every major event on that momentous day. One reason why Jesus could endure his trials was that he turned to his father in prayer. The apostle, on the other hand, failed to persevere in prayer that night. As a result, their courage weakened when the hour of test arrived. Matthew 26 and 40, and it reads, He turned to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Could you not so much as keep on the watch for one hour? With me, keep on the watch and pray continuously so that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit of course is eager, the spirit of course is eager, but the flesh is weak. And then we have 2643, and it reads, And he came again and found them sleeping for. Their eyes were heavy. Matthew 26 and 45, it reads, Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, At such a time as this you are sleeping and resting. Look, the hour has drawn near for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Again, we all fall short of the glory of God. Matthew 26 and 56, and it reads, But all this has taken place for the writings of the prophets to be fulfilled. Then all the disciples abandoned him and fled. When we face trials, we will remain faithful only if we follow Jesus' example and pray continuously. Thank you all for listening. I'm sorry for any mistakes that I made, but I just wanted to read over this and get it out here for us. We have all this good spiritual food, and so we want to take advantage of it so I do apologize for any mistakes, but also I want to thank you for coming back to the channel, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye now.